Alright well guys, we are going to continue from where we stopped just now. So we are going to continue with additional polymerizations. So many alkene undergoes what we call as a chain growth polymerization when treated with small amount of suitable initiator. So the product are addition poly additional polymerization result from the repeating addition across the double bond of monomer. So table below shows some of the most common addition polymerization made from the substituted alkene. So um, uh, this uh, ethene form polyethene, popene form polypopene, styrene form polystyrene, isobut um, this is what we call as uh, uh, this uh, two methyl propene. So we form this polyisobutyrene, then this is a po vinyl chloride from polyvinyl chloride and polyacryl nitriles uh, from uh, polyacryl nitrile. So uh, a few examples of the applications of this polymer in our daily life are uh, this is what polyethene is used as. So this is a low density polyethene which is often used as the plastic bag for packaging. High density polyethene is frequently used to store um, this uh, household uh, household liquid bottles. So polypropylene is often used to make plastic chair, plastic table, and housing utensil. This is uh, polystyrene. So uh, polystyrene is used for food packaging. It is also sometimes used as um, wrappings. And finally, vinyl polyvinyl chloride is used for piping purposes. So the mechanism in additional polymerizations involve the additions of the reaction for end growth chain across the double bond of monomer. So depending on the monomer and the initiator, the reactive intermediate may be a free radical, carbocation or carbanion. So although these three types of polymerization mechanisms are somewhat similar though, we still consider them individually. So let's start off with the first type of polymerization, which is a free radical polymerization. So using an initiator of the radical sources, the polymerization begins by breaking the covalent bond into peroxide of the organic peroxide compound. So for example, uh, benzoyl peroxide is often used as the initiator for the reaction. So this is the initiation step where through ultraviolet okay, and also some heating, you form a benzoyl uh, radical and which eventually will form a phenyl radical. So the phenyl radical will then propagate uh, ethene to uh, form another uh, ethene radical. So this reaction will propagate for many of the ethene molecule and eventually undergoes terminations. So these sequences are very similar to the free radical uh, mechanisms where you have uh, initiation, propagation and also terminations. Catalytic polymerization is making use of bronsted lauryl acid such as sulfuric acid and chloric acid or uh, Lewis acid such as boron trifluoride or aluminum trifluoride as catalyst or initiator by donating proton. So in contrast, any cationic addition is only efficient with ethylene derivatives that contain an electron donating group such as hydrogen, methyl, isopropyl, uh, ether and also amine. So the mechanism for the cationic polymerization is described below, starting from the uh, bronsted long acid which donate the proton. So the proton will attack the C double one C and there is a transfer of proton will take place. So you form a carbocation. So the carbocation will then propagate of other molecule. So through propagations. And finally in terminations, the reaction ends by adding the bases back, the ClO4 minus, where deprotonations will take place and this is the a product of the polymerizations via cationic polymerizations. Last but not least, we also have anionic polymerizations. It occurs via carbon ions intermediate. So the initiator of anionic polymerization is usually a nucleophile, which is a Lewis base, such as lithium amide and also butylithium. So a good monomer for anionic polymerization should contain at least one electron rejoining group to decrease electron density in C double one C. So for example, uh, styrene. Cy uh, cyanide, halogen, and also uh, ester. So, um, initial step of the anionic polymerization is very similar to that of the cationic polymerization, where the butyl lithium will first attack the uh, C double one C and carry out the electron transfer. So, you form a carbon ion as the uh, head. So, the carbon ion will further propagate to many of the uh, acrylo nitrile. So the, and the reactions terminated by using an acid or electrophile such as water or carbon dioxide where this is the termination process of the reactions. So um, 
hopefully you can tell the differences between the free radical additional polymerization, cationic polymerization, and also anionic polymerizations. So, uh, Carl Ziegler and Guyon Nata announced independently in 1953 the discovery of the catalyst that permits stereochemical control of polymerization called as Ziegler Nata catalyst. So, the main ingredient for the Ziegler Nata catalyst is actually made from the titanium tetrachloride and also tri-alkyl aluminium. So, Ziegler Nata catalysts are generally employed as a suspense solid. So, the mechanism used in here is an uh, ionic mechanism. So, um, there is the evidence that polymerization occurs through an insertion of alkene monomer between the metal and the uh, growing, pol growing polymer chain. Uh, so the polymer formed using zero nata catalyst may exist in either syndiotactic and isotactic, while free radical exists as an atactic polymer. So that is all for additional polymerizations. Next, we are going to learn how to classify polymer. So polymer are sometimes classified based on by their properties. The four most common categories are thermoplastic, elastomer, fiber, and also thermosetting. So what is a thermoplastic? So a thermoplastic are polymer that are hard at room temperature but soft when heated. So polymer in this category are very useful because they can be easily mold and are commonly used to make toys and storage container. For example, PET is a thermoplastic used in manufacture of soft drink bottle. Now, other examples of thermoplastic include polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, and low density polyethylene. The second is uh, elastomer. So elastomer are polymer that are returned to their original shape after being stretched. Elastomer are typically amorphous polymer that are made by a small degree of cross linking. So natural rubber is one of the most common example of elastomer. So a more contemporary example is a spandex, which is a polyurethane with a small degree of cross linking. So spandex fiber are used to make bathing suit and athletic gear uh, and other applications. Then we have fiber. Fibers are generated when certain polymers are heated, forced through small holes, and then cooled. So the resulting fiber exhibit crystalline region, and they are oriented along the axis of the fiber, which endow the fibers with significant tensile strengths. So examples of fiber include nylon, dacron, and also polyethylene, or all of them has appropriate degree of crystallinity to form a fiber. And last but not least are thermosetting. So the thermosetting resins are highly cross-linked polymer that are generally very hard and insoluble. So one such of the thermosetting is bakelite. So this is the molecule of the bakelite. And you can see that there are many cross-linking in between them which cause this to become very hard. Last but not least, we have applications of polymer in daily life. So natural rubber. So Malaysia is well known as one of the major exporters of rubber uh, from either the Havia brasilianis tree or the Guta Pucha tree. So the basic monomer of natural rubber is 2-methyl-butane-1,3-diene. So this is the structure of the 2-methyl-butane-1,3-diene. This is butane, huh? sorry for the um, spelling mistake. This is butane-1,3-diene. Yeah? Okay. So uh, polymerizations in here will take place. So uh, you can see that if the monomer has the C double bond C, the monomer has the position C double bond C at the position of one two and also three four. So after polymerization, the double bond located at only carbon two and three. So unlike protein and such, natural rubber are linked together by additional polymerizations. So uh, this is the properties of a natural rubber. So uh, natural rubber has a low elasticity as it cannot revert when forces release. So most of the natural rubber are easily oxidized by air, even by ozone. So this is due to the double bond in the rubber can easily be oxidized by ozone, oxygen and ozone. So this can be prevented by adding sulfur. So rubber is not a very stable compound. At low temperature, rubber is hard and brittle. High temperature, rubber becomes soft and sticky. So rubber is a water repellent. It is impermeable to water as it does not water allow to penetrate. And since it does not easily dissolve in water, it dissolves easily in organic substances such as benzene, petrol, and also alcohol. So the properties of natural rubber can be improved by, uh, by two adding sulfur into the rubber with via the two reaction below, heating natural rubber using zinc as catalyst, mixing the solution of disulfur dichloride in methyl benzene. So sulfur added rubber to with crossing via disulfide linkage between the rubber polymeric chain and form vulcanized rubber. So disulfide linkage formed between rubber can be prevent the rubber to slip from each other, hence increase the elasticity. Furthermore, as disulfide uh, linkage is formed, the pi electrons exist in the rubber has decreased and caused the uh, molecule cause the rubber to be more resistant towards oxidation and also due to the increase in molecular mass and also more resistance towards heat. 
Vulcanized elastoma produce the greatest quantity uh, in styrene butyrene. The styrene butyrene commercially prepared from styrene and butadiene via free radical polymerization. Uh, it's also a called as a holy polymer because it's made from two different uh, monomers. So the tire produced vulcanized SPR produce the highest quality rubber which is suitable to make high grade tire for automobile vehicles. So polymer might bring a lot of conveniences in our daily life, however at the same time it causes some problems too. So the main problem dealing with the polymer is the method of their disposal. Polymer, especially polyalkanes, decompose very slowly in the environment as they are non-biodegradable and are resistant to most of the chemicals. So there are three general options to on disposal of the polymer. Number one is by recycling polymer. So by sorting them according to their type of polymer, they can be recycled accordingly. However, this advantage is the cost of recycling. So the amount of energy used is to collect and reprocess material can be greater than the amount of energy used to make new product from new material. Combustion of polymer. So uh, since polyalkane are hydrocarbon, they are also a good fuel. So burning waste polyalkane will both deal the problem of disposing and also reduce the amount of main hydrocarbon used as fuel. However, the disadvantage of this is the toxic fume produced, which is harmful to human and pollution caused by to the environment. We can also undergo pyrolysis by burning polyalkane under high temperature in the absence of oxygen, so it will broke down into a smaller useful molecule. It is very resemble to the cracking process of alkene where a mixture of hydrocarbon is produced which contain alkene, arene and also arenes. So alkene extracted can be recycled and make more polymer. So there are many logistical problems that limit effectiveness of polymer recycling, more significantly the collection and sorting because, um, for example, when recycling PET water, a small amount of different polymers uh, present in the batch will interfere the recycling process. As such, polymer recycler require a polymer that produced by hand, stock by hand first. So to facilitate the sorting, most of the polymer are labeled with recycling codes with number 1 to 7, indicating the type of polymer and are arranged in order to ease. Uh, of ease to which polymer can be recycled, so one being the easiest and seven being the most difficult. So table below indicate the seven recycling codes and the polymer that are corresponds to each code and the several uses of the recycling product. So these are the codes for the recycler uh, that we can see in our daily life uh, frequently. So um, with this hoping that um, so the, uh, when you read all this, you are able to have more consciousness uh, about uh, recycling polymer. Okay, so I believe um, that is the last part for our video uh, regarding polymer and that is all for the semester 3. So I'd like to wish all of you good luck and hope my video lessons so far has helped you in understanding the learning of chemistry. So I'll see you around. Thank you.